Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, September 16th, 2016. Today we're going to discuss when the best time to leave feedback is for your eBay customers. We're also going to discuss some other old favorites, such as free shipping. We're also going to discuss a little bit about what you guys felt was important with last week's video, and some other eBay concerns that have been brought up. So let's get started, and like always, we'll start with a rehash of last week's video. I read your comments and concerns, and since quite a few people wrote in about leaving feedback, and when you guys do or don't, I decided to make that today's top priority. It wasn't going to be my topic of the week, but since a lot of you guys did write in, it seems to be important to you, so I want to address that. Also in last week's video, you may remember I talked about feedback extortion and how to handle that. Apparently, that's a very important topic because that video got about a thousand views in a week, which is pretty darn good, right? So, I want to bring you guys up to date on how my little incident played out. You may remember last week I told you guys that somebody had bought an item from me, a very cheap item. He never contacted me in any way, he just went ahead and left me negative feedback. After leaving negative feedback, he started harassing me for his money back, even though he lost the items. He didn't have the items to send back and it was a give and take thing, eBay finally stepped in after I contacted them. They removed the feedback for feedback extortion and they also banged him with a policy violation. Now, what you guys don't know is the following things have transpired. One thing I didn't mention in last week's video is this guy, this same buyer, had the unmitigated goal to contact me twice on Labor Day a national holiday demanding his money back. He contacted me at about, let's say, 9 o'clock in the morning and then later at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I was out all day with my friends. I did get the notifications on my iPhone. I said, forget that. Who in their right mind would notify somebody like that on Labor Day, a national holiday? So I wrote back to him the next day. I said, why are you contacting me on a national holiday, Labor Day? Anyhow, last Friday, or as of last Friday, he had not yet opened up a request or a case, but he did, Friday night or Saturday morning. As I told you, Friday night is when they all come out. So, I went to respond to the case, and as you know, they have choices. One choice is like communicate with the buyer, give the buyer a full refund and he gets to keep the item, escalate to eBay. And there was one other choice that I saw that kind of, I don't recall seeing before, and it was decline the request. So I called eBay because definitely he wasn't getting his money back because he said he lost the items and he has nothing to send me back. So I got a Filipino representative. I explained what the situation was. They looked at the emails and the gentleman said, well, Joe, you're right. The guy, in fact, does not have the items to send back to you. But don't even concern yourself with that because this case has elapsed over 30 days and you are not required now to give him a refund, which is something I myself didn't catch because it's been going on for so long. So I just clicked decline and the refund was declined. Now, whether or not he now segues over to PayPal and goes that route, we'll see. But I just wanted to keep you guys abreast of the situation. In my 17 years on eBay, I have never had a legit buyer pull anything like this. Never. And it was over a cheap $30 item. While we're on the subject of cheap items, I've had already, already this week, four returns which is high for me. My returns don't start usually till Friday night, so I'm sure there'll be a few more coming. Every return was under $30, $30 or less. 
I've always said the cheapest items cause the most trouble. However, the good news out of the situation is every cheap item is shipped first class, okay? So these $30 items, I'm spending between $260 and $350 to ship, so I'm losing very little on them. The bigger items, that's a different story altogether. I'm still offering free shipping on anything under five pounds. The most expensive items to ship that are five pounds, four or five pounds, are out to Washington State or California, and it's costing me, I believe, $14.03. However, knock wood, I don't have any problems with returns on those items. It's only the cheapest of the cheap items that seem to be an issue. For my larger items in my 17 by 17 by 8 boxes, I am now charging shipping on every one, bar none, as I list them. In some cases, I'm charging just a portion of the shipping, just like as insurance. In some cases, I'm charging the full shipping. I do feel that charging shipping for these items does slow down the sales. I do feel that. But what can I tell you guys? I have to be protective. Knock wood. I've never had, to my, to my recollection, I've never had one of those big boxes that I've showed you in the past, 17 by 17 by 8, ever returned. Because those people are usually pretty cautious as to what they buy. But when you sell the cheap items, man, they just click buy, buy, buy without reading. So yeah. Also in last week's comments, quite a few people not, not quite a few people, but a few people started a long thread about politics. All right? Look at the sign. I'm not talking about politics. One subscriber even went as far as to condemn me for not coming out and supporting Trump. This is not the politics channel. All right? Neither of the candidates is paying me to support them or to run a commercial for them. So they're not getting any airtime from me, neither of them. Who I vote for is my business. Who you vote for is your business. If you want to talk about it, that's your privilege. And it's my privilege not to talk about it. So there'll be no politics spoken by me on this channel. Another comment that I read was a person wrote in asking about cell phone alerts. How they are notified or how they are not notified in this case. Guys, I don't know what kind of cell phones you're using, whether it's an iPhone, you know, smartphone, Android. I have the iPhone 6. And anytime something sells or a buyer contacts me, I get automatic notifications on this instantly. If you have an iPhone, you should set yours up that way too. It's very easy and it's very, very helpful. Let us now move on and talk about feedback, when to leave feedback. Guys, I'm not going to tell you what to do or when you should leave feedback, but I'm going to tell you what works for me. I've read your comments in last week's video and in prior videos where we've talked about this, and we are very much divided. I know there is a good amount of you people, you sellers, that do not leave feedback for your buyers until they leave it for you first. Okay? I know there's a good amount of you that do that. I don't do that. Okay? What I do is I leave feedback approximately once a week because I really don't have the time. So, one thing I will never do never ever do is leave feedback immediately after a purchase. So if a guy buys an item from me, let's say Friday at 9 o'clock at night, I would never leave feedback Friday at 9.30 at night. Absolutely no. That's one thing I would never do. And that's because there are too many variables in play. As you know, a buyer could easily cancel the transaction. So for that reason alone, minimum I would wait is 24 hours to leave feedback. Often I wait a full week because I like to leave it in bunches. It's quicker and faster for me. So basically that's how I do it. Anybody buys an item from me, let's say from Monday to Friday, 
We'll all get their feedbacks, let's just say for argument's sake, one batch on Friday night. The only time I will not leave a feedback when I'm leaving the feedback batch is if a person has communicated with me and given me some kind of reason to think he may return the item. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen, okay? I get a lot of people writing to me, not a lot, but a decent amount, with questions, legit questions, but a lot of times they don't follow through on them. For instance, I had a guy the other day, I was selling an item for around $125, and he says, will you accept $100 for this item? Now that's not unreasonable. So I wrote back to him and I said, if I lower the price to $100 as you requested, will you buy the item today? You know what he wrote back? Nothing. I never heard from him again. But guess what? Two days later, another person, a stranger, paid full price for the item. Excuse me a second while I take my customary drink. So as far as feedback is concerned, guys, that's how I do mine. Approximately one batch a week, I bang them out all at once, okay? I myself do not wait, for the most part, for a buyer to leave me positive feedback first. I know some of you guys are going to hate on me for this, and don't hate on me, okay? It's your privilege to leave feedback when you want what works for you, all right? I'm just giving you my opinion, all right? I mean, if you want to say you wait for all your buyers to leave feedback first, I'm not going to hate on you for that. That's your business. Do what works for you. I'm just telling you the way I do it, okay? Now, while we're talking about sales, how were your sales this week? My sales were decent and they were steady. I didn't have any days that I was shut out. I sold, I believe, a minimum of three items per day. I'd like to do more, okay? I feel now that September is here, the summer is over, sales are going to start cranking back up. I know, I remember last year, and you know, every year, there's quite a few people in the Facebook groups that go ballistic over the fourth quarter. They love it. They talk like it's the next coming of the Christ. I myself, in past years, have found the fourth quarter to be lackluster, with the exception of last year. I vividly remember last December to be the best December I ever had in all my years on eBay. So I'm very cautiously optimistic that that will again happen this year. We can only hope. So guys, that's basically it for now. Comment below on any of the topics we've discussed or any topics that concern you, all right? I'm especially interested in how your sales were this past week. Also, if you want to tell me and tell each other when you guys leave feedback. I, we talked about this last year, but things are fluid and they constantly change, okay? Things constantly change. I've had people write in and say to me, Joe, I saw one of your recent videos and it's very good and the information was helpful, but you put out a video seven years ago where the information was completely different. So why don't you take that old video down? The one that comes to mind right now is that one about PayPal I did. The one with uh, PayPal stole your money and your girlfriend, something like that. Well, that video, the, the reason I leave that video up is it gets so many hits. I'm telling you. <laughs> that video is a legend in itself, and that video is staying up. Okay? But anyway, guys, I'm Crazy New York Driver. You're not. Thanks for watching. Any comments, concerns, comment below. Happy sales, and I'll catch you guys next week. Rock on, man. Peace! <laughs> yeah!